Welcome back to I Dream of Dingy. Today, I have a totally different type of journey and I am so excited. As many of you may know, I have a strong attraction to historic ghost towns. Well, Namu is a ghost town on British Columbia's west coast with a haunted history. I have visited Namu many times with my service in the Canadian Coast Guard, on adventure trips, and now with my YouTube channel. Visiting Namu has always given me a sense of strong past cultures. All the people and the traditions that once inhabited the land. I hope you enjoy this brief history as I share with you what Namu once was and where it stands today. Located about 90 miles north of Vancouver Island and east of Hakai Pass, what remains of Namu stands as a reminder of both past successes and forgotten dreams. A town that seems lost in the mists of time. Once thriving, Namu is rich in local folklore and many stories of boom and bust surround this now abandoned fishing community. The first non-indigenous habitation within the village began in 1878. By 1893, the Robert Draney family had established the Namu Canning Company to serve the fishing fleets in the region. By 1909, work had begun on a small sawmill that was built to provide lumber for local building and housing projects. The canning facilities continued to grow and underwent several ownership changes through the years. Finally, BC Packers LTD took over the ownership and operation of the plant in 1928. NAMU became a hub of activity for commercial fishing along the central coast of British Columbia. Regional fishing boats flocked to the cannery's close proximity to prime fishing grounds. People were employed and things were good. The bounty seemed endless. Then, disaster struck. In January of 1962, a massive fire destroyed much of the cannery and BC Packers was forced to rebuild a large portion of the facility. At the time, demand for fish was still high. This was seen as an opportunity for the company to modernize machinery and processing technologies, resulting in increased output and reduced labor costs. This meant fewer jobs. Ultimately, BC Packers closed the Namu cannery. Slowly, the conditions of this temperate rainforest have consumed Namu into the land and sea. I might be a little wrong, but in the 80s, in the recession, the cannery shut down and basically they just came in and uh, one day said, okay, we're done. And it was a company owned town. So 
It became abandoned not that long ago. Look at this ground, it's full of fishing nets. Yep. Guys, this is Namu. Uh, one of my favorite places on the coast. And it's low enough that I get to see it often enough because it's close to Vancouver Island. Everything is just left. It's all a rust. This is from the dock. Look at this. That's all rust. It's not a rock. Oh. Should we go up there or can you? A little much. Something about Namu is Namu has actually been recorded as one of the oldest human inhabited sites on the coast. I believe they did a, some research recently and we'll put it up in later and let you know. The people have been around here for 11,000 years, yeah, wow. which is quite incredible. So this cannery was just a tiny little piece in the historical occupation of this place. So this place has been, humans have been here for a long, long time. Now what is it? Now it's just a ghost town, probably one of the best on the coast. If you look ahead, we're looking at the old restaurant. Really? There's still, yeah, there's still chairs and cutlery in there. All the windows are busted out. You know, this seems like a place that you would see a ghost or hear a ghost or there's children's toys over there. This place is creepy. Watch out for rock. This place is creepy. Yeah, we gotta watch our step here. Broken glass everywhere.